with all the new theories uh, that have been developed by people like de Broglie and Heisenberg, they opened up the door for a guy named Erwin Schrodinger to come up with this model called quantum mechanics, which is sometimes referred to as wave mechanics, to try to somehow mathematically and conceptually look at the subatomic particles that make up the atom. So quantum mechanics deals with crazy mathematics. So I'm going to try to do my best to simplify this down and kind of pull apart a couple key concepts that we can look at here at a general chemistry level. So with our atom, we have the protons and the neutrons that are contained here in the nucleus. And we have the electrons that surround this nucleus. And typically, we draw that electron path as a circle, which was kind of represented by the Bohr model. But in reality, the electrons aren't just orbiting in circles. They can kind of follow different paths. But one thing that we do know is that when the electron arrangement changes, the energy changes. And that electron can be either absorbed or emitted. And we can now look at the properties and try to come up with a mathematical model to fit that. One of the things we want to look at is something called the concept of minimum energy. And what the concept of minimum energy says, the lower energy an atom has, the more stable it is. So electrons prefer to be arranged in a combination of minimum energy and hence maximum stability. So these electrons are going to arrange themselves in any way possible to minimize their energy or lower their energy. So if we look at the nucleus, it's going to have a positive charge. And when the electron is surrounding the nucleus, since the nucleus has a positive charge and the electron has a negative charge, there's going to be a force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus. Okay, So the closer the electron to the nucleus, the lower the energy. We also know that, and in many atoms, there's more than one electron. So if we have an electron interacting with another electron, there's going to be a force of repulsion. So here, the further apart from each other, the lower the energy. So we kind of have a battle going on here because in this atom, we have electrons buzzing around the nucleus. We have the nucleus there. There's forces of attraction. There's forces of repulsion. And all of these are going on at the same time. So we can make a few statements about this. 
The first is that electrons can only have certain definite energies. thus occupying certain definite orbitals around the nucleus. And we'll get um, dig into this term orbital a lot more coming up in further sections. So we also can say that the electron energy is quantized. And by quantized what we mean is there are definite allowed energy states that the electron may occupy. So now that we know these two statements, we can kind of say what quantum mechanics will do for us. So quantum mechanics are going to describe the electronic energies and arrangements mathematically. So, again, we have our protons and neutrons here in the nucleus, and the electrons are out here orbiting this nucleus, and we can kind of, you know, define this term orbital, and we can say that the volume or space in which the electron is likely to be found is referred to as an orbital. And if you get into more detailed chemistry courses, we can use the term like probability density functions to figure out where that electron is likely you know, to be located. So we'll look into what this term orbital is and look at how quantum mechanics will allow us to mathematically calculate energies of the orbitals in the next video.